On my previous video, I got the recommendation to start introducing myself at the beginning of his video, so I'm going to start doing that from now and I think it's a great idea. Welcome to Kendo Tips, my name is Jose, I'm a Yondang in Kendo, I am from Venezuela, and today we're going to talk about holding your sword, hold your shina. Before I keep going with this video, do not forget to subscribe, also hit me with that like button and share this video. Thank you very much again for watching, let's get it going. The very first thing I got taught uh, when holding a shina is to make sure that my hands, my palm is on top of my shina rather than on its side. When it's on the side, it's harder for me to control the sword, especially during the swing, and when I'm gonna stop it, because a lot of times it will go right through my thumbs if I'm hitting too hard. So in order to put power and have control of your sword, it's essential that you put your hands, your palms on top of the shinai. A lot of times when we're not getting that power, some of us or a lot of us overcompensate by putting force with the right arm. Uh, in, order, in order to avoid having that type of right-handed subuti, I think it all starts with holding your shinai, your sword properly. When you have the palm in the right position, it's easier to control the shinai and it's easier to transfer the power into the sword. I am going to talk purely about your hands on your shinai. There's a lot of more details when it comes to your back, your arms, and your even your head and so on. So in order to just not make this video too long, I wanna talk just about the hands on the shinai. This also transfers to holding a sword so the difference that I'm going to emphasize when holding a sword for this video is that with the sword, you're going to have this part outside of your hand, where with the shinai is going to be inside of your hand, like this. So I'm using an oval shinai, which kind of simulates the shape of a sword. Um, if you're using a round shinai, the only thing I wanna make sure that you know of is that this line, the stitches are straight, because sometimes when you've been using a shinai for a while, they start curving like this. So the first thing I want to mention when holding the sword is that the sword, the way I see it, should be an extension of your arm. I try to line up this bone with my shinai. So wherever this goes, the shinai is going to follow. The placing of the palm especially is very important because that's what's going to transfer the power into a shinai. First thing I do is I put my shinai inside of my hand. One way I was explaining on holding the shinai is that if you extend your hand away from your body with the palm looking away from you, you can put your shinai right in front of it and just close your fingers. Quick little reference points is that you want to make sure that this line, the stitches of your shinai, it's aligned with your body, with your, with your forearm. A quick little reference that you did it right, I seen this video uh, a while back of this guy that he puts a line on a, on a glove and then he puts them on and lines up with the shinai. I'm gonna try to find it, I'm gonna put it in the comments box below. So if I have it in the right position, I can actually hit hard with the, with the one hand and the shinai would stop instead of. After you have find the right position for your palm, the next part is the fingers. You don't, you don't want all the fingers tied on the shinai. The way I have them is that I have this ones relaxed on the shinai and it gives me a little bit of flexibility on my, on my swing. And then this ones are firm on it. Now, when I swing my shinai, one thing that I'm doing, it's also pulling the shinai with my left hand. But I'm gonna talk about it, about this specifically in another video. Just remember this, firm fingers and the top three fingers, they are relaxed on top of the shinai. They're not loose, they are relaxed on top of the shinai. Same thing with my right hand. I wanna make sure that mm, these two fingers are gripping the shinai, they're firm, and this upper three fingers are somewhat flexible. And the reason for this, uh, and again, I'm gonna make a whole different video about this, is because when I'm swinging, I'm also using my bottom fingers in order to also give power to the shinai. 
thing it's a combination of my wrist and my fingers again whole different video now what I do for my for my right arm is that I use my left hand as reference if you have your hand properly on the shinai with your shinai inside of your palm and this part right on top of your shinai if you put your right hand right above that it kind of does fit in like a puzzle piece so this part of my hand kind of it's able to fit right on top of it in between my thumb and my index finger if i have it out to the side then this part of my hand is going to be on top of my on top of the knuckle of my thumb what i want to do is want to make sure that this part of my hand it's right above and it kind of fit together like a puzzle piece so it fits like this so both of my palms are looking away from my body at all times when i swing that gives me a mirror position of my left hand and again i want to make sure that my two fingers the pinky and the ring finger are firm on top of the shinai and my other three fingers are somewhat relaxed but still wrapping around the shinai not loose and not open from here what i do is i just put my right hand away from my left hand and i have it where i'm almost touching the suba of my shinai now i don't have a suba on this shinai uh, but that's that should be your reference point I'm not gonna get into the discussion about well, what if my suba is too long, that, that'll probably be another video. So subscribe if you wanna stay tuned for that. If you have your hands in the proper position, you should have flexibility, you should have speed, and you should have power, and more than anything, you should have control. So avoiding an over swing of the sore, or making sure that your shinai stays on a straight line when you're cutting down. There's a lot more going on, especially when you add up the arms, the back, the lower body, because everything is connected for your swing. But I feel like I needed to break down just the placing of the hands in order to build up to more. With this foundation, I think we can avoid so many more mistakes. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Do not forget to subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed. Hit me with that like button if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you want to hear from me. Thank you very much. I'll catch you in the next video.